Revenge of the prison rep here. Look at this. Bang. <laughs> he was done. Sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you the nail. Listen, we might have to we might have to censor that right there. That ain't good, right? Yo, top billing. Jersey Murph back again, partnering up with the great folks over at DraftKings, who once again have a steal of a deal. They told me to tell you once again, new customers signing up for that sports book, that DraftKings Sportsbook app, can get $200 in bonus bets with a $5 bet. A $5 bet can get you $200 in bonus bets instantly, and all you have to do is head on over and download that DraftKings Sportsbook app, enter the promo code TOPBILLING, and get to playing. It's going to be super fun, and no matter what, they have you covered. If you don't have online wagering in your state, it does not matter. DraftKings Daily Fantasy is where it's at. That bad boy is fun. I try to dabble in that there. Father gets you 200 for new customers using that promo code top billing at the DraftKings Sportsbook app and you haven't already done so? What are you waiting for? Don't do it now, but right now. Let's go. I right, y'all on the eve of the season kicking off. I know everyone out there is excited as your boy Jersey Murph here, but listen. We got to keep up with the bit. I got to make fun of you guys talking about these edge players because you guys went and you absolutely did what I thought you would do. And that's go hammer time over another edge player. So if we see on the final 53, of course, you chin a new Osu guy is an absolute animal. Uh, right on past that, Daryl Taylor. Guy's a pass rush maven. You can say what you want to say about all this and that. Listen, he can only get better with more experience. The guy's very inexperienced and got your nine and a half sacks. Suppose he expands his game. Why is everybody always worried about someone new? What about something true that you've already drafted before? But listen, Boye Mafe, the star of the preseason, he looked exactly like I thought he would look when everybody was poo-pooing on him because they got that guy right next to Right next to him right there in Derek Hall. But listen, but Boye Mafe, nasty against the run, physical, energetic. Really reminds me of you, Chinna Nuo. So having those two guys opposite each other on base downs, I can only imagine what that could do for a defense there. And then bringing in a Daryl Taylor. Now listen, Tyreek Smith. Everyone told me he wasn't going to be on the team. They were saying Tyreek Smith not going to be on the team. Alton Robinson not going to be on the team. So Alton Robinson was correct. Tyreek Smith not so much. Tyreek Smith was playing his ass off as well. And he looked just like the guy that people were excited about before. But of course, if you don't make an impact right away, people forget about you. Now, Derek Hall here. I say it again. I was confused when they drafted him. I did not understand drafting another edge player. I made that thing where I had about 12 edge players on the on the field at the same time. <laughs> I wish I could find that picture. I need to find that picture. But listen, uh, Derek Hall, I'm pretty sure he's a talented cat, but the more and more I labbed the tape, I didn't really see him stand, standing out against standout competition in college. I didn't see Derek Hall really standing out in the preseason as well. You know who did stand out? Besides all those guys I mentioned there, like a Tyreek Smith and a Boye Mafe, it was this cat, Levi Bell, here. And he had a huge fan following. Everyone wanted to ask me about Levi Bell. And I said I was not going to do anything on no Levi Bell because he already have 25 edge players. There's no way he would make that active 53-man roster with all those guys already there. And as you can see there, he did make the practice squad, though. So uh, they're obviously impressed with him, but they did put him out there subject to somebody grabbing him and they were not doing that to Tyreek Smith there. So let you know the type of talent that they do have at the edge, but that's a lot of players at the edge position. Matter of fact, I want you to check out a couple of things here because we need to talk about this. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Something that comes up on my Seahawks coverage a lot are the fans coming there talking about competition. Uh, Pete Carroll likes to compete. Compete, compete, compete. Everything is earned. So, if that's the case, why is Levi Bell not on the roster and your man Derek Hall is? If you had to go by who played the best out of the two in the preseason at the very least, you would have to say it's Levi Bell. To me, that goes to show you that it's also a business. You're not going to draft a guy fairly high 
and then cut him in favor of a guy of a guy who's undrafted who you think you could sneak on the practice squad and maybe stash and dash or whatever. Think about it that way. So if it's a meritocracy or something like that, you got to call it what it is there. But not to disparage Derek Hall by the least. I am very interested to see what he can do, but I just need to know more about him. What is his move? I saw this quite a few times. Check this out. One arm extension and then a blocking release from the tight end. And you have people actually hitting me up about this, was talking about this as like it was some type of dope-ass pass rush move. They only look at the result. They need to look at how the results are derived. Look at this. He's wide nine out here with a tight end who's on a block and release. Look, one arm extension. One arm extension. This is not going anywhere. He dips back inside pretty much following the tight end there. The tight end releases to the uh, kind of a traffic release to the middle of the field there. And look, it's wide open. My man right here is sitting in the pocket having breakfast. Shit, he eating that Geno's right there, right? This is not during a regular pass set. And then he gets to get in there. They get a late push off of that, right? So he doesn't actually get to the quarterback there. But man, if you're looking at it from a shallow perspective there, yeah, he, he rushed the passer there. But from a technical standpoint here, uh, he was just at the right time at the right place, if anything, right there. Wasn't really a great pass rush set. Very similar move here from Levi Bell. Uh, different result, though. We can see this. In oh, my God. Ooh. Oh, my. Listen, that, my friends, was a prison rep. <laughs> Bringing back the prison reps right here. My man, I'm not going to lie. Y'all ain't sitting in that quality support. I was thinking about going back to slanging narcotics. But after seeing this, I was scared straight. I want no parts of prison. <laughs> if somebody's going to be in there doing this right here, look at the low pad level. Look at the explosion off the ball right there. He's coming with a, a fistful of fury right here. Bang! Explosion to his chest. Sends shock waves all down his spine, all the way into his calf muscles and shit. That was, he was just done. Straight up right there. He's trying to sink these mud hooks in, right, and anchor down, but it's not going to happen. He no longer has control of his, of his body from the waist down. So he's getting walked into the lap of the quarterback. He's walking the dog like a yo-yo trick right there. And my man just has to let go and disengage and just let it happen. He's trying to get to your prison bunkie. Your prison bunkie got it right there, and then bang. That was it for his prison bunkie. His prison bunkie up here doing a damn reverse MC hammer. He doing the Bobby Brown and shit, trying to stay up on his feet. But no, nah, he goes down like a $2 hooker real easy, and bang. He got a two-car pileup right here. He hits his head on the back of that dude. He sent the zombie towel, right? <laughs> and he's done. Fertilized. The man is coming with some straight-up fury. Look at the football intelligence here by Bell. He's he's nine, right? He's widening out at the nines. Look at him re-cement the edge. You'll see him sprint out just to re-establish the edge and then work back to the quarterback. That's hard. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that before, right? You get these rolling pockets here with this zone, almost like a slide protection. So he's like, you know what? Let me disengage, sprint past the moving pocket here, and then turn and then reestablish the edge. <laughs> the quarterback is like, what the heck just happened? He ain't know what to do. He tucks and just grounds that bad boy. That is some really good work by Levi Bell right there. Now, here's the best rep by Hall here. It's more of the same, that same type of bull into a one-arm extension. So he does get it done right here. You see the left arm there and continues to work. Is that a white collar sack? Was that over the course of a regular pass set? You had the quarterback on the set here. Obviously, there's nowhere to go with this ball, right? You can say that's a coverage sack. He didn't have to work back inside. I'm going to say it's half and half, right? A white and blue collar sack. So you have to let me know what the white <laughs> and blue mixed together is, right? Is that purple or something like that? I don't know. Don't ask me. But listen, coming out of that wide nine, right? You can see him here, if I can get it correctly here, you can see him here, instantly fight the hands right there, right? So violent hands there, 
but then he does his normal, right? Normal routine here. Bull rush into the one hand drawing that wasn't really wasn't working against the Minnesota Vikings left tackle. This one right here looks like he gets gets him up under his chin, right? So obviously he's probably got a little bit of a nine percent grade concussion right there, right? He's done. His legs collapsed on him and everything. He works back inside here. The quarterback starts to hit his exit plan. And then he gets left with those exit wounds right there. So that's a really good rep by Hall. No doubt about it. That was his best rep. But uh, most of it, though, was more of the same. All right, here we have Hall. And somebody has said something to me after this rep. I'm like, come on, man. You have to look at how the results are derived. It's the hammer and the nail situation here. Mike Morris tying up three blockers. Then you get on an end exchange, on an edge exchange, I'm sorry, you get your boy Hall coming around here. So that's not really Hall's doing here. He gets the pressure, but that's what it's designed to do there. It wasn't like he beat the man in front of him or whatever. You got the three stooges here. Bink, bink, bink. Yuck, 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 yuck. They ball bumping into each other right there. So he has a clear path to the basket. So, right, a clear path foul here. And uh, he gets the pressure there gets a hit on the quarterback there but good work by Devin Bush breaking that up though on the inside there all right I gotta get this joke because they <laughs> on the very next rep right <laughs> it was a it was a revenge <laughs> revenge of the prison rep here look at this bang <laughs> he was done sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you the nail listen we might have to Ooh, we might have to censor that right there. That ain't good right there. That's like, that's the opposite of what happened before. If you can see right here, everything he does have big energy to it. Look at him swinging his arms and everything. He's coming with that fury, like I said. But sometimes, man, you leave your chin exposed and then bang right there. You can see the Fruit Loops, Lucky Charms, <laughs> like all kinds of shit was happening, right? Tulips and violets and shit like that. He's done. <laughs> he got his revenge right there. He had to sit it down right there. <laughs> then they had to go ahead and just let it happen right there. We're going to have to block that out for the kids there. But you get what I'm saying. All right, so here's one with both of them on the field at the same time. You get Levi Bell here and you get Derek Hall here. Now, look at this. Let's go with Derek Hall here. Gets chipped a little bit, but the same kind of deal right there. Let's go back on his rep right here. The one arm extension move. I noticed that's like definitely his bread and butter, and that's a pure strength move right there. Uh, you better be the strongest of the strong to do that, and I'm not so sure Derek Hall has it like that. Not to say he's not a strong kid, but come on, man. You're going to have to be able to vary your move approach in the NFL. Strength just won't get it alone. You got to even a cat like Nick Bosa and Joey Bosa. Both of those guys are very strong, but they they've added to their move list to where uh, this is not the deal right here. Especially when you have cats who are longer than you. You're doing the one arm extension. You're actually probably helping them out a little bit right there. So he does come in and get help and everything there. But uh, let's go back on this and let's look at Levi Bell here. Oh, look at that. He also got chipped a little bit so they both got the same thing but look at Levi Bell and the creativity right here he dips inside and look oh man that's dope giving him half a man right there showing some so, some severe lower body strength right there maybe you could say he's the hammer in a in a in exchange situation here right which made him go inside but I'm not so sure about that right this may just be something that he was going to do anyway but regardless of that he breaks through there and he's the one that forces this errant throw all right check this rep out from Hall here really more of the same tries to fight the hand and then tries to use the one arm and my man wasn't having that right he didn't that didn't go anywhere that was a straight up prison rep the other way right let's see it right here comes off the ball right that's a, a really good frame for an edge player. There's no doubt about that. You can see him right here trying to fight the hands, but with one arm there, tries to slap chop that bad boy, and then bang, he tries to give him half a man here. And it looked like he was going to try to hip toss him, right? Hip toss him off to the side. This guy's, this is a big dude, right? Pause. He's a, he's a big dude. I'm not sure you're going to be able to move guys in the NFL like this. And this is not like this is some type of superstar either, right? So this is not their superstar left tackle here. And you can see right there, that ain't working even against him. Like, he ain't going nowhere right there. Actually, you can see, who's this on the other side here? Tyreek Smith. 
Tyreek Smith getting pinched, right? Bang, has to fight through that right there. And then you can see him start to work against the tackle there. And he's actually moving the pocket a little bit. All right, here they are in their 3-4 set. And you see my man squeeze down and then look at the tight end come right there. Look at the power. One more game. Come in right here. Like, I don't, what's up? I don't know. He looked pretty powerful in college, but like I said before, not against the elite competition. Some of the better teams that they faced, man, he was pretty much non-existent. If you can see here, the tight end peeling back on him. And, man, you got to give that to the tight end. He's not going anywhere, and he's very close to the quarterback. If you think if he can fight through that, he's actually getting pushed out of the pocket. Imagine that. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.